Now, difference in kidney of different organisms in um, fresh and marine water are their specific adaptations. As we talked uh, in case of the fish, the freshwater fish um, and the marine fish, that is freshwater fish produces a dilute urine with a lot much quantities of water. In the marine fish, they produce uh, less urine, a concentrated urine with um, a very decreased quantity of water. Now we come on the human beings, the human excretory system. Humans produces carbon dioxide, water, ammonia um, and other waste products and they have to remove these consistently to maintain their homeostatic balance because this homeostatic balance is responsible for performing all the functions of the body. In the case of increase in pH for example or a decrease in pH, many enzymes of the body may not work. In uh, uh, the case of increase or decrease in uh, pH or um, uh, some other um, solute concentration of the body, our many cells may not respond as they are doing normally to the environmental situations, to the internal environment, maybe to the external environment. So excretory system is extremely important. And the major organ which is involved in human excretory system is the kidney. There are other accessory structures which are associated with kidneys. Let us have a look on a diagram to um, look at the, uh, the structure of human excretory system. Let us look at this diagram. This diagram shows the excretory organs in human beings. If we start from the top, we can see on the right side in red color the aorta. Aorta is the main vessel with oxygenated blood coming from the heart. On the left side, we can see in blue the vena cava, the major vein which is taking uh, the blood from the body back to the heart. This is deoxygenated blood. We can see that both of these vessels are entering on both sides into two bean shaped structures, the artery and the vein. These bean shaped structures are the kidneys in human beings. We can see that on the top of the kidney, there are two uh, light, light, light yellow colored bodies. These bodies are called adrenal glands. Then if we come down, we can see that towards the inner side of the, uh, these bean shaped kidneys, there is a depression. Through this depression, a canal is coming out. This um, part of the kidney is called hilus. And the canal which is coming out, which is initially very thick, and then it become thin. This is called the renal pelvis. When it goes down and become a thin canal, a thin tube, this is called the ureter. You can see that one pelvis is coming out of each kidney. It means that both kidneys are giving rise to a pelvis and then to ureter. Both of these ureters, right ureter and the left ureter, are going down to an organ called bladder, also called urinary bladder. This is the part of human excretory system that stores urine for temporary time. The artery which is going inside each kidney on the both sides are called renal artery, renal arteries left and right and the veins which are entering in the arteries are called renal vein left and right. This is the generalized diagram of the human excretory system. In human beings, a pair of kidneys exist inside the abdominal cavity. Kidneys are attached to the dorsal body wall. They are present in, they are uh, slightly uh, covered with a fatty layer to protect them. But they keep attached to the dorsal body wall so that they are protected in a way that they are uh, attached and they are not exposed to the any type of uh, interaction with other organs. The convex part of the kidney, that is the part as we have seen in the previous diagram which have a depression is towards the vertebral column and the more rounded part is towards, is um, facing other than, uh, towards the other side of the vertebral column. One kidney as you, as you may have observed if we go back to the diagram, one kidney is slightly 
higher or anterior in position than the other kidney. Actually, and the other kidney is uh, towards more posterior side. This difference is actually due to presence of a large stomach towards that side. Uh, due to the presence of a large stomach, because stomach in human being is a large organ, uh, the kidney's position is uh, slightly posterior in comparison to the other one, which is below the liver. The convex part of kidney, that is the part towards the vertebral column, uh, the depression, give rise to uh, a space uh, or we can say provide a space where the renal vein, renal and, uh, arteries and the nerves can enter the kidneys. So this depression is actually the place where the renal artery, renal vein and the nerves enters uh, or leaves the kidney. Um, then comes the ureters and then the urinary bladder. Let us have a look on a diagram, a surface diagram of, as we previously observed uh, now we are looking at um, in a more um, larger picture. Kidney looks like a beam externally. If we do not observe it under cross section, we can see more clear way that an artery is entering inside the kidney and when it is entering, it is branching. We can see that a vein is um, also uh, entering kidney, actually leaving kidney, it is also branched. Then renal pelvis is coming out or we can say the depression is also giving rise to renal pelvis which is making down there a ureter, a thin duct which is actually for collecting the urine and moving it downwards towards the urinary bladder. Let us have a look on a cross section now. If we cut the kidney and look at the cut section, a human kidney consists of um, three major regions. One is the cortex, you can see in the diagram that the external most part in pinkish color is called the cortex. Then the next part which is light pinkish in color is called renal medulla. This part also have various structures which are uh, looking dark brown in color. These are called the pyramids, pyramids of the kidney because their shape resembles the pyramids. There are many pyramids inside and then these uh, pyramids are entering inside the uh, renal pelvis. A funnel shape or uh, an extended portion, uh, we can call it a funnel shape portion, all of the pyramids are entering or attached to this funnel shape portion and this funnel shape portion is actually called the renal pelvis. These pyramids have those units which are responsible for producing the urine and then all of these uh, functional units release that urine or collect that or send that towards the renal pelvis which lead towards the ureter and the urine goes down. Let us have a look on these functional units. Let us look at the next diagram. If we cut a section of kidney through from cortex through medulla, we can see one functional unit as we are observing in the diagram towards right. This functional unit is called a nephron. The kidney have so many nephrons to produce urine. Let us have a look on different parts of the uh, nephron. Nephron is the functional unit of kidney. This is responsible, all the nephrons are collectively responsible for producing a urine and uh, conducting various processes for the production of urine. The first part as you can see is called a renal corpuscle. There is a small corpuscle like structure, a capsule like structure from which this nephron actually starts where the artery, actually a part of artery enters. Then comes the next part, a highly convoluted part which is called a proximal tubule. This proximal tubule is convoluted, highly convoluted. Then it goes down in the form of the third part, it makes the loop of Henle. As you can see that renal corpuscle and the proximal tubule are present inside the cortex. Then the loop of Henle is entering inside the medulla. Now there are two types of nephrons. In one type of nephron, the loop of Henle is not that long that it enters too deep in the medulla. We call them cortical nephron. There are other nephrons like this which you are observing here who have lo long loops of Henle and uh, their loop of Henle goes deep down into the medulla. These are called medullary nephrons. So nephrons themselves are of two types, cortical nephrons and the medullary nephrons. Cortical nephrons whose loop of Henle is short and the medullary nephrons whose loop of Henle is very long. After the loop of Henle, loop of Henle you can see have two parts, one is descending 
going down towards medulla and then making a U down there in the medulla. You can say it takes a U turn and then it goes up. This is the proximal part. Then this goes back into the cortex, convolute again and makes the next part which is called a distal tubule. Distal tubule remains in the cortex. After a distal tubule, it is a distal tubule is as you can see in the diagram is again convoluted. It goes down and make a comparatively larger duct called the collecting duct. Collecting duct as you can see goes down till the end of the medulla and this actually produces the final urine towards the ureter. So a nephron, number one nephrons are of two types, cortical nephrons and the medullary nephron. Cortical whose loop of Henle is short, medullary whose loop of Henle is very long and goes deep in the medulla. Then various parts of the nephron are corpuscle, the renal corpuscle, then proximal tubule, then a loop of Henle, then a distal tubule and then the collecting duct. These are various parts of the nephron. Let us have a look on another diagram for uh, some more details of the renal corpuscle. The renal corpuscle actually consists of an extension of the convoluted tubule in the form of a bowl, a, corp a, a capsule. Inside it, there is, uh, as you can see in the diagram, the efferent arteriole, the artery is coming inside, which is giving rise to an arteriole. And this arteriole is making a complex network of capillaries in the form of a circular structure, a rounded structure. This rounded structure, convoluted network of capillaries is called a glomerulus. Glo so glomerulus is a network of capillaries which is surrounded by an extension of the renal tubule and makes it a whole of whole corpuscle or a capsule. This is sometimes also called or termed as the Bowman's capsule in the name of the discoverer. So it means that artery enters inside the kidney and gives rise to arteriole and arteriole enters into the glomerulus actually the Bowman's capsule and makes the glomerulus and glomerulus is surrounded by the Bowman's capsule and then you can see uh, next that this artery the same artery on the other side from the glomerulus is uh, moving up and uh, moving from the top of the convoluted tubules it is making a whole network around the convoluted tubule, proximal tubule and the loop of Henle. And then it is making a capillary network down there and after that this capillary network is joining with the venule which is going back in the vein which is coming inside the kidney. So it means that each nephron is um, surrounded from every side, almost every side except for the collecting duct. It is surrounded by the blood vessel, by the artery first, then a capillary network and then going back towards the venule. So nephron is richly supplied with blood vessels and this is a requirement for uh, exchange of the materials, the waste products between the blood and the uh, renal tubule.